Let's go. The renewed hope, the dreams that come alive with week one, and we are finally underway. Football is back. And it's Brashard Smith on the return for the Canes. He's got room, turns the corner, steps on the gas, bounced out of bounds after a return of 40 yards. And Dyke throwing for the first time. Quick hitter. Here's Kobe Young. Check out the speed. said we'll show the Hurricanes who the real Miami is they're going to get after the junior quarterback and he swallowed up blown up in the backfield four-star stud he gets the carry another big hole opens up how about Mark Fletcher here's Henry Parrish galloping all the way to the 25-yard line a gain of 37 shot out of a cannon to start this third quarter right back to Fletcher runs through Quickly, he has to. Big hit, a punishing hit. Cam Kitchens. Here's Henry Paris Jr. Breaks a tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricanes. It was all about the U in the home opener. A dominant 35 point victory. Coming to you live from the top floor of the OBB Corporate Tower in downtown Coral Gables. These are the Orange Bowl Boys, presented by Ed Morse. Join over 2 million people that are backed by Morse. Visit edmorse.com. And by Paul Bange Roofing. From residential roofing to commercial roofing, even roof repairs, give Paul a call. Get your free estimate at paulbangeroofing.com. Here's Toast, Roman, and Scoop. Miami Hurricanes knocked off Miami of Ohio 38 to 3 yesterday. This is the recap show. <laughs> it's the recap show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> toast, toast, toasty, toaster, toasted, toast, toaster, strudel. You got what you wish for. Bro, it's like you they were inside my mind. For, huh? They were inside my mind. First of all, let me just say, I had to spend about five minutes as I was on the toilet this morning. How do we start a recap show again? <laughs> it's different than the normal show. It's been a while. How do we and, say? And, okay, and, the, and you also heard, I, I noticed that the open is different for this show. Yes, it I is. like the I like the music. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We were all bouncing it's our heads. The little things that really make me smile. Yeah, listen, man, I was smiling right off the bat. So uh, they came out, right, you know, just start pounding the ball. Um, if it wasn't for that penalty, I'm pretty sure they would have continued running the ball. But then the the third got knocked back five yards to an, uh, an eight, throw it to Colby Young, and he just pff, defense. I mean, bro, this is awesome. This was awesome. It was fun. <laughs> it was great. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was fun. Like you had, like you didn't watch every play fun. You know what I mean? You didn't have to watch every play because you're worried about something happening. Um, look, there's there's a lot to talk about. Um, and just being there and my, my overall kind of assessment of the game, um, and we'll get to it, and, and Rose, J.O., and all that kind of stuff, but I have a theory on that. This defense is really, really good. It They come at you in waves and they come at you from all angles like it like really 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 good i'm excited about the defense the, the you know the corners we'll see how they hold up as far as downfield stuff um but the pressure was there malagoa and ro and i sat there and watched this dude like one particular series he's so stinking good man he's 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 so much better than we thought he was and then he's so much better than that his ability to fit and and schematically make the offense go. He I mean, one time he set the edge. Literally, this is one play. He he set the edge on he was on the field side just and just forced him back into the middle. And you saw him just get from the mic and just set the edge and force him right back into the and it was like the little things like that. And I'm like, dude, this kid is so stupid good. Let's go. Let's go. 
He was so fun. So, so are we are we starting on the defensive side of the ball? There's just like, I don't know. I'm like a kid on a kid. Where are we going? I don't know what to do. Man, wherever you want. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what where, to do. Where are we going? Well, I think I let's start on the defensive side of the ball because we praise Lance Gidry. I said, you know, coming over from Marshall, the guy had a formidable third down defense. And last night for the University of Miami on third downs, remember that was a key for me. It's been a minute since I've seen a Miami Hurricane defense good on third downs. Well, if you're going to get better on third downs, why not get the guy who was best at it last year at Marshall? And that was Lance Guidry. Miami ended up two, two of 12. Miami of Ohio, two of 12 on third down. So Miami of Florida did a great job getting off the field. And I like the way they do it because they just get after the quarterback. They hit my checkbox by doing a great job on third down. They hit Toast checkbox because they were extremely physical. Like we physically dominated that team. You put on the I, I I put on the student of the game. If you're on social media, X, Twitter, whatever it's called these days, go on there right now. You're going to see some of the clips right off the rip. I can tell you, we just outmanned them. Like they had no the toast. The first run we had, and I don't want to jump back over the offenses. Uh, we we threw them like four yards downfield. It was it was insane. But on the <laughs> defensive side of the ball, not to be outdone, even though we were talking about them being out undersized, they're still physical. Now I'm in the I'm in the booth. Had a phenomenal time. It was probably my best experience ever going to a Miami Hurricanes game from front to back. Got to thank Paul Bainch Roofing for that. Awesome. 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 My wife, she sparingly goes to games with me. Sparing. First comment she says, she looks down at the field. She's looking at these guys. Babe, yeah. They're so much bigger. That's exactly what she said. Now, it's a good Litmus test, it's a good barometer because she noticed it. And that's not somebody who's paying attention to sizes and weights like us weirdos when it's like, you know, gawk at young kids' football picture season. She doesn't do that. We do that. But she noticed immediately off the rip that the, that the University of Miami looked physically more imposing. They uh, they rushed for two first downs. They only had they only had they they only earned eight. They got one on a penalty for nine. So, but only two on the ground. They were negative was, at half. Yeah, in terms it, of absolutely. I mean, listen, uh, th this defense flies. They fly around, and I don't know what got into Kiko's head at halftime. In the third quarter, he was possessed. He came out, had five tackles in the third quarter alone before the quarter was even over. Like, they didn't say his name a lot in the first half. Second half, he was everywhere. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I got to get this thing going. It was, uh, we haven't had a mic like that in a long time. I mean, that was, you can just, he's just, he looks the part. They all look the part, bro. Like, they, you watch him on TV, they look bigger. They just, they look the part. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, with Malagoa, it, because I watched some of that Washington State film, and he just never, I mean, you know, he just never looked that fast. He's so, and and what do we always say? We always say that the Miami players they just look slower in the Miami uniform. They just don't look as fast, or maybe it's just the players that we've had for the last twenty years. Maybe that's it. He he looks he's fast, bro. Like. Yeah, I man, he he to me is truly the cog in that entire defensive system. Because like I said earlier, his ability to play his assignments properly and then get off of his block, shed his blocks, get, you know, fit uh, seal the end like he did yesterday in the one play and then the very next play, he came from um, the backside. Yeah, he came from the backside. down from behind. Like, so, <laughs> I'm like it's it's just it's cool to watch. Cam played well. Cam with a Bit, man, big hit too. I thought it was like, well, there he goes. I figured that, that he was going to get kicked out. Um, clean hit, didn't throw a flag. Absolutely shocked about it. Um, James that's Williams, the uh, James Williams that's played what, really well. The the cam didn't get a flag because that's what. Listen, he's known for having clean hits, and he's an all American now, bro. And the True. officials know that, and so he's going to get a benefit of the doubt because they assume that he's doing it the right way. Hundred percent. He did. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Mari Carter with that same numbers kicked out for sure. Yes. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> or they're so at least reviewing right? it. They're at I mean, least that's, reviewing I mean, it. I mean, I was yeah. like, oh, he's wearing yeah. five. We already got the notification <laughs> that he's out for the first half of the Texas A&M game. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I was worried about. I was worried about that kind of stigma, yeah. like you know, following Cam with the five on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're still gonna penalize Cam even when it even when it's the new five. Amari Carter is gonna be you know kicked yeah, out. Yeah, I was a little worried about that, but James. What Williams had a had a really really solid game too. 
A solid, solid game. One of the things that I found interesting, right, was that the University of Miami in premise, though, in terms of tackles for loss, thinking about how we kind of came out and kicked their ass physically, how many tackles for a loss do you think we had? Just throwing it out there. I don't think we had a ton. I'd say like seven. Very good guess. We had six. Okay. Which the reason why I want to bring that up, because that was always so much of a premise, you know, under the Manny Diaz era, oh, tackles for loss, tackles for loss. But how many games did we have like 12 tackles for loss, but got completely obliterated and gashed up? That's not what this defense is going to do. I don't think you're going to have this really special tackles for loss thing, but they're going to be sound. They're going to create pressure in ways. And on third down, when we got that first sack, it was Javari Harvey who ended up getting in there. Ruben Bain was, you know, There's an half and half. Guy. They got like, a half. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Ruben One Bain play, was half also, a sack. First play of his Miami career, he comes in. We watched him. Big 44. He's got legs like a tree trunk. You, you, tree trunks. You can't miss him. Comes in, gets a half sack. But they're preserving their back end. It, they got pressure with the front four. Yeah. And then the rest of the guys are just. And by the way, I heard them talk about their name in the post game locker room show. And I didn't know this. And we're bad fans. Maybe it's Maui Noah. Like the G is silent. I, I, I'm, I'm equally confused. I'm just saying it's Maui Noah. Yeah, Kiki Maui Noah. Maui Noah. Yeah. Well, you yes. know what? Uh, two has got his is pronounced differently too. Without the the N, his last name. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, who, it's weird. And, anyways, okay. Anyways, we need more of them. Any kid. Anyway, I like that part. They're just ballers. I don't. I don't know. It's just tough culture. I love it. <laughs> I love. It. I said it for years, and now we got a Mike linebacker. We're like. Ow, who's like probably third cousins with Pao Malu. <laughs> I'm loving it. But I, I don't know, man. It's just uh, it's just different how this defense is going to attack you. But Georgia, and that was the thing, Georgia won their first national championship, second national championship, but less tackles for loss those years than the Miami Hurricanes. So it's not all about tackles for loss. So don't get infatuated with that stat moving forward. Yeah, a lot of hats on the ball, though. I mean, there wasn't. There wasn't a lot, a whole lot of solo, and and I go back to they ran a, uh, they ran a hitch, on the Miami sideline, that uh, one of the Brown brothers came back, and made a real nice tackle, but, Couch hit him at the same time, right? You remember that play? Mm-hmm. And and typically you would see, okay, you've got you've got single over there, you've got one on one, and then and then he's got to make that tackle. If he doesn't make the tackle, then you're in trouble. Um, but he came back to make the tackle, and then Couch was right there to, to clean it up uh, and and held him like two yards short of the first down. So there was very, very few times where it was one-on-one uh, having to make a tackle. There was just hats on hats on hats everywhere around the ball. The other great thing that we didn't see yesterday that we saw nonstop last season, big plays, giving up big plays. Mm. They had They had one completion over 20 yards. Um, so it was, we, we were not, you know, they were not beating us over the top. They tried a few times. Cornerbacks seemed to hold up pretty well. Um, I, I agree with you scoop. That was kind of the one they really didn't get tested a whole lot yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. the defensive line had uh, Gabbert running for his life from pretty much the jump. Um, so we'll see how they do moving forward. That's there's still kind of a question mark there in my mind, but bro, it was, I saw everything I wanted to see yesterday so that I feel good about next week. You know what I'm saying? None of my optimism has been uh, faded away going into next week. I'm maybe even more optimistic now because they showed me that they can run the ball. I mean, we can go over to the offense now if you want. I mean, offense, listen, I my only issue with the offense, and this is nitpicking, from after the first drive till about five minutes left in the second quarter, in my mind, they didn't do shit. They couldn't run the ball. They couldn't impose themselves. Then something happened. I don't know if it was an adjustment row. I mean, obviously, after the first drive, Miami of Ohio made an adjustment defensively. And listen, they have a good run defense in the MAC. They, they, they're they known for that. Um, they made an adjustment, and they kind of sealed that up a little bit. But then, row, what happened? What did Shannon do? Because something happened late in the second quarter into the second half where we just started tearing them open again. Well, I just got done essentially with the first quarter. In the first quarter, they were preparing for the big play. And we're highlighting that. They had corners who were essentially, you know, seven, ten yards off who were backpedaling. So, and we heard it, right? And I saw it on social. Hey, Ro, I thought we were going to be vertical. We were going to take shots. It's smarter sometimes to just take what the defense gives you. So a lot of just underneath stuff, Tyler alluded to it in his post-game show. It's like, hey, listen, they were taking away a lot of our big shots. 
So when you do that, you're always going to sacrifice something. So we were able to run the ball early. They're the number one team rush defense in the MAC last year. So they made a little bit of adjustment. Then we came back and adjusted to that and started running from different sets, from different formations. We, they started to get a little bit more wear, worn out. And that's what I felt after the first half, even though it was sluggish. And you're absolutely right because I was like, oh, it's just another offense right now, J.O. But then I knew in the back of my mind, I was like, they're going to blow the doors off. They're going to rush the ball super, super effectively. We're just too physical. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's that weird shit when the ESPN app that I have in the background just plays a commercial. I'm like, what the hell is Jenner doing? <laughs> I was like, when do we get sponsored by Home Depot? <laughs> All right. Anyways, I'm sorry. But, I mean, we made an adjustment. We really did. We took what the defense gave us. It, it wasn't sexy in, in terms of a big play thing, but I, I'm telling you, you know, it was sexy to the head coach being a former offensive lineman and seeing him down. He definitely walked off the field with a Woody. There's just no way. I mean, that yeah, was exciting I mean, two, to him. Yeah, 250 on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's what you kind of – and that's what Toast alluded to, and then I tweeted it yesterday. The more and more I think about it, that's the more and more that's what we want to see. The you average 6.9. Uh, yeah, it was seven yards carry. Yeah. Um, And I'll get into the running backs in a little bit, but – yeah, I mean, that's what you want to see. That's it. And they didn't show, like Tyler said, I mean, they took that away. So they ran the ball. They didn't show anything downfield. Right. I mean, it's it, they're, the passing. And, and even when uh, even when Emery came in, right, he had a couple passing plays that he had four wide. I kid you not. There was one play. And I don't know if you can find it. He had four, it was four wide. He ended up getting sacked. He tried to kind of peel off the outside. Uh, towards the, uh, the Ohio only bench. only sack of the game and he he took onus on that that was definitely on the quarterback there yes there was no receiver past 10 yards downfield though mm -hmm. so if you go back and you look at that play you're like where is everybody like that nobody left the line of scrimmage almost it was kind of weird those all the every route on that play was very very shallow um but what I wanted to say was Roe mentioned to you that Miami made an adjustment and I'll tell you what the adjustment was because it was obvious and it was very simple. And then Miami, Ohio couldn't fix it. They went from running in between the tackles to running outside the tackles. That's it. In a nutshell, if you look at the difference between the first half and the second half, that's the difference. And Miami, Ohio could not get off the blocks. They were getting sealed inside. They were running a little motion stuff. They What was it? fourth and two or third and two that one time where they ran I remember I think it was Colby in from the top brought him down next to the the tackle on the left I and mean, here's here's a crack I mean and it, and right outside of it right I mean that's just the simple stuff that you should be able to do one of the reasons that happened um we got to give props out to McCoy the the tight end did one hell of a job acting as an offensive lineman out there mm -hmm. like holy dude he was just he was a sixth offensive lineman yeah that's what yeah we uh, we were in the box going uh, anyone want to throw to a tight end? <laughs> and, anyone want to throw a tight end? And then, and then Emery actually hit uh, Riley Williams to Williams mm -hmm. uh, late in the game. 18 yard completion. <laughs> yeah. Fletcher's dad's like, hey, tight end. We were high fiving. <laughs> well, it's Arroyo so ended up getting pants early. He was in his, uh, you know, pants, not yeah. his work pants. He was in his work shorts. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he didn't play. And uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what. I didn't watch. I'm not sure if Skinner was even dressed because um, I didn't see him much, if at all. So, I mean, look, he, my opinion is, and I'm not trying to get too far down down, down the road on this. My opinion is, and I know I'm going to get such backlash for this. They probably used 15% of the install yesterday. So, yeah, so, yeah, don't, I mean, so don't yell at me because I think that there's more in the playbook because I think that there's more in the playbook, a lot more in the playbook, and they didn't have to show it, and they didn't bother to show it based on what they were given. So don't yell at me about it. I'm not saying that this is not J.O., but what I'm saying is there's a lot more in the playbook than what was shown last night. Four games. Give us give us a round of yeah, four games. Like, give, give, give us some time I, here. I've said this. We've been at this for several years now, doing film review for several years now. It's not fair after one game. I could tell you from a coaching perspective – if you can beat a team that soundly with 15% of your playbook, what you're going to do, it's a proverbial middle finger to you too. Cause we're saying you can't stop it anyway. So why you're supposed to do that. 
I'll get into that at the end. That's like mm -hmm. the overarching theme. You're supposed to be able to do that. You're the University of Miami with Mario Cristobal as a coach who can recruit. You're supposed to have more physical horses. You have more physical horses. We're saying, hey, look, this is like 2001. We're about to run the counter. You can't stop it. That's exactly what we did to you, Miami of Ohio. You couldn't stop it. I want to segue over to, to Tyler. Do you know, and I don't necessarily think Tyler needed to play brilliant. He had a brilliant pass. The best pass of the night was Xavier Restrepo down the sideline. But I don't think he needed to play brilliant. But what I found fascinating, did you know his completion percentage last night would have been his second highest completion percentage mm -hmm. on the year last year? Mm -hmm. So he was still ruthlessly ruthlessly efficient at what he was asked to do. Both the quarterbacks, Emory Williams, which in itself, and Mario was quick to come out in the presser to say, he was just the backup for today. So I don't think that's going to be the whole season reminder. I think there's still some hope for Jakari uh, to be the backup that next game or the game after, depending on what we do as far as a fundamental like game plan standpoint and using his legs. But Tyler, Ty I'll give him like a B game. You know, it wasn't necessarily an A game. We've seen Tyler's A games. It wasn't a C game. Wasn't he? Didn't he? Didn't they were. As quarterbacks in tandem, they were 20 to 25. They were surgically efficient. I, I felt, and I'll pass it back to you guys, I felt watching that game, this was a like pre the rise of Alabama game. You remember when they just, their quarterbacks were like game managers? They, and you they just could run on anybody. That's what I felt like I was watching. I felt like I was watching a, like a 2017 Alabama team. I was like, ah, we can just run all over this team. Right. We don't we don't need to do much. And then they got, you know, they got the Ridleys of the world and they started to, to be a little bit more explosive. Tua comes in, that kind of a thing. I just felt we were pre that. And that's exactly how we won. It was easy. It was easy. Yeah, Tyler, and, Tyler, he wasn't asked to do Tyler. much. He wasn't no, asked to do much. Right. Um, I mean, that that long kind of crossover. I mean, I don't know. I didn't see it. That there was no one. I did see there was the no one on the bottom. Yeah, there was no one on the bottom side I, of the field. I just for that put that on. That was that was literally one of the last plays before I jumped on this show. I got to give credit to the nickel corner. It was the nickel yeah. corner on the opposite side. Correct. Xavier Restrepo is going on a crosser. He's following the crosser, and then he realizes, wait, I shouldn't follow him all the way around. He swings in a three sixty. He doesn't even do a one eighty. He does his head, a head turn in a three sixty. Looks for work. He just so happens to pick up the crosser that Tyler's looking for. I'm trying to put myself in Tyler's shoes. He never sees him. He never saw back him. Off. He never yeah. saw him. And the he, fact there's no one there to occupy that guy, right? There's no one on the on that side of the field to occupy him. So he had nowhere else to go. Exactly. He, go wherever the, he wanted to. And, and me nitpicking, I see that. What will we do? Either you're going to have to have a low to, a, a low receiving option to keep him flexed yep. because he had nobody that he had to respect right. in the flat. Right. So he could have he could have just dropped. So. It's on Tyler. I'm not saying that, but as far as a fundamental a fundamental standpoint, it wasn't perfect because you need somebody to be able to keep him down into the box. Yeah, was, that was so my first that. thought when I saw the screenshot. I'm like, where's the outlet on the bottom side it to was, keep this guy shallow, right? And he could go wherever he wanted to. But here's the thing that I appreciate. Go back two years ago. We didn't do it that much last year. I didn't feel like it at all. We call it max protect toast is when you're actually keeping a running back and a tight end and a lot more guys in the block. So you give Tyler time. The, the thing that I took away from that play. Yes. Tyler threw the interception. He had all the time in the world. The reason why there was no low option on that side of the field was the running back was still chipping, was still blocking. Then he released late. Mm -hmm. The tight end did the same thing at the boundary side of the field. So they're, they're, they're doing it. But the good news is Tyler made you look so damn good two years ago in max looks. When you give him time, he could, He had the time to throw it out. Yes, he missed it, but keep doing that. He's, it's going to pay off. That shot's going to be there. If you can protect him, and that was one of Scoop's game plans, if you can protect Tyler, he's going to make you look good. Yes, he threw the interception, but he had all the time in the world, and it was in a something that he was super, super successful. So successful with RPO, so, so successful with Max Protect looks two years ago. And and we saw a lot of that yesterday. Well, at least I saw that Max protect. So even on the interception, yes, bad, but it was they were still good behind that play. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't sacked last night. So keeping him upright, that's what we wanted. Uh, and he was incredibly efficient. Which is look, if if you ask Mario what kind of game Tyler had last night, he'd tell you he had a fantastic game, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what he would tell you, right? Except for the pick. Great game. He was efficient. He managed the game well. 
that's I mean, that's what he wants to do. He wants to be able to do that. And then Shannon Dawson comes out and says, see, I told you. This is running back by committee. Mm -hmm. You had Henry Parrish with nine carries. You had Mark Fletcher with nine carries. You had A.J. Allen with nine carries. And you had Don Chaney with eight carries. I'm not sure how he could have scripted that better, but it seemed all right. And the only one without a touchdown was A.J. Allen. So three of them had a single touchdown, and they all ran for the same as far as um, as far as touches. Parrish, 10 yards a pop. Right? So early and often, uh, and then late in the game, it was cool to, man, to see them, to see them, and then Fletch, Fletch is legit. How great is it? And man, he had such a great blitz pickup too. I mean, that, you know, that was like, that's why we talk about this. That's why he's playing. Yes, he's a great runner, but we've had great runners here in the past that had no idea what to do in protection and couldn't see the field. So, I would, uh, I would agree. I would give Tyler a, uh, a B, um, did what he was asked to do. I, I will say this, listen, and the whole, oh, we're going to keep things under wraps for A&M. We don't, fine. If that, if that's what it is, fine. But I just going into next week, my only, my only hang up going into next week is I better not just be getting served tunnel screens all fucking game long. I better see a vertical passing attack at some point. That's all. That that was the only thing. I mean, we had the one pass to uh, X with that. He just dropped it in there. Perfect one-handed catch. It was fucking phenomenal. That was, well, like midway, late in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that would be the one thing. There was a lot of tunnel screens going on. So hopefully that was just because, you know what? We can overpower these guys. That's all we needed to do. But yeah. Yes and no. Coming out of last night's game, I realize that I'm more concerned about a position than I thought I was. Okay. I don't think we have the horses top to bottom at receiver. Well, looks and like I know we they went out receivers. We have George and they got and a couple guys. I yes. But but Jacoby can be a Sunday guy. 100%. And I think X in the slot is brilliant, always has been, and can eat you alive. And he showed it to you again last night. And their their chemistry is amazing. Outside of those two, I don't know. Show me anybody Colby? that's going to be able to play on Sunday. Yeah. Kobe, Kobe? Kobe takes, Kobe takes Kobe. one pass for 44 yards. Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. But that's what said. I said. You said that's your Kobe. Sunday you said, guy. You said, you said George. You said George. No. Was your Sunday guy. No. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe Young. Did. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Kobe Young. <laughs> Kobe Young is the Sunday guy. I said okay. that, you know. I, I Well, give credit to Jacoby George. But I just he had don't... his career high in catches with six. So he led okay. the team in catches. So, But I agree. I, I, I think, uh, Scoop, I just want to temper that. I hear where you're going. We just don't, and not many people do. We don't have a Marvin Harrison Jr. on this team. We, we don't have that guy. We have guys, but we don't have that guy. In different positions, we have that guy. You know, at running back, we could have that guy, uh, an NFL guy. You, you just don't know. with the it, it, And Dawson said it as well. I think it's better than last year, but I don't think it is where it needs to be. You remember I said that this was a 2016-2017 Alabama team? Well, you need those wide receivers to to put like the more modern day twist that they had it, and I think that's just what I saw last night. Now we'll see how they can. I mean, Harrell was supposed to be that deep threat over the top guy. Didn't really see it. And only had one catch, and I believe it was for fourteen yards. Yeah, there there it is, one catch for fourteen yards. They didn't have to show much. They were trying to limit the deep pass. I, I agree. I, I have some it. concerns with the wide receiver position, that, but it does concern me top to bottom. But I I'm not I'm okay with it. Yeah. Right now, I'm, I'm I'm okay with it. Seeing Kobe take that for 44 to the house on a simple screen, I mean, that looks good in Tyler's stat book. You know, just, hey, I had a 44-yard pass mm -hmm. play. I mean, something mm -hmm. that went over 40 yards. Ray Ray got some burn. I would say this. He's probably the quickest kid we've had on that field in trying to, trying to figure out 
dates here. Uh, I mean, since a Sonoris Moss or Roscoe or I mean, he is electric. I think he he's he's going to be fun to watch oh, I, this year also, too. I I also think that uh, we'll see Burchard take one to the house this year on a kickoff. Good opening way to start the yeah, season too. I, I like the fact the forty yard line. I, I like having him back there. I I, I like that uh, that potential for special teams all season long. <clears throat> I mean, the was one our, thing was we- our punt return team just not very good. I mean, the guy kicked it sixty yards every time in the first four. Good punts. punter, very very he is good, good punter. punter. He averaged forty five point two, longest sixty two. Two of them in the twenties. He's a good. And then their their kicker also, dude, that kick got a leg. He drilled that thing from forty eight, and he had a good ten yards to spare. <laughs> no, you get like a boost anytime you play Miami, right? Anytime you play Miami, there's a couple things we can count on. You're probably not missing a field goal, and right. you're never you're get- field goal. 10 Let's extra yards on your punts. 10 yeah. extra yards on your punts. It's just those, it's fir- it is. those it's first like, three punts. We were like, bro, what? Yeah. what is this? Just, <laughs> I am in awe of just how good kickers and punters are. The second the punt country. is 62 yards. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, what? In the air, mind you. Yes. Was yeah. that the one? Is that the one that X fielded at the or fair caught at the three and they got yeah, run the penalty? Yeah. yeah. And they hit him. But then, dude, punting has turned into an. Or look at you. Look at the Utah game. Their punter. How many times did he drop it inside the five against Florida the night before? It, it was, was going sideways. Right. I can't even check a gap wedge that. Guy. Right. <laughs> and and I I want to give I want to give the credit to the Miami coaching staff. All right. And you said the Florida game. I was like, we never got a penalty for having two kids in the same jersey number. So great job. Great yeah. job, guys. They, they mm-hmm. changed it up every time. Yeah. It was. It was comical. They literally, it's the same 47. jersey. 47. Yeah, every they keep putting either they they put uh, yeah, Jacoby, Jacoby George, or X, yeah, yeah, or X in there. I, I that was kind of tongue in cheek praise the coaching, but I want to praise them wholesale now after that first game. That was your Middle Tennessee State equivalent. It was say whatever you want to. Number one rush defense in the MAC last year, and in a year's time, you were able to transform your roster to be so much more physically imposing that is what a mario cristobal team is what we assumed would happen last year now you fast forward so i want to i want to praise the development side of the coaching staff like the the ascertainment of talent and the development of such talent you were more you were way bigger way more physical i'm turning on the tape within five minutes of this game it's evident and clear Right, you got your doors kicked off last year by a, a, a you know mid major school. Now you're sitting there doing that. The operation went smooth too. Yeah, you didn't get penalized for two years. Now the offensive line, yeah, they got to clean up some false start penalties. But from what I've been told, a lot of that was just like kind of dummy bullshit from Miami of Ohio making those calls, like those dummy calls on the line, which should be you know illegal. And refs need to probably clamp down on that when they're like, oh, and then those guys are jumping. So you don't want to use a silent count at home, but that's something they're going to have to clean up. But, you know, when to go for it, when not to go for it, the team's getting on, No, you know, no, it, it looks smooth. It looks smooth. You didn't have those first game where, okay, this guy looks, the defense never looked confused. The defense was locked in. You don't have them like running around like point, like crazy, like, where are we doing? What are we? They, they had a good game plan. Francis Maui Noah, I mean, Kiki Maui Noah was like praising. He's like, dude, the coaches had us well, well prepared. Everything we were seeing on film, we saw in the game. We knew exactly where to go. We knew exactly what to do. Emery Williams praised it too. He goes, I can't believe how much you have to put – because what I was learning in practice showed up in the games to a T. So praise the coaching staff there. That's a very good start. They have a lot on them too. They they feel the heat. We know that this is a rebound year for Mario Cristobal. But this is what I was expecting last year to do to these teams. Just be physically imponent. You can run all over anybody you want to. Now, it's early. We ran successfully early last year. Teams are going to adjust to us. Let's see where we're going to adjust to them. But that was a much, much better start to your equivalent of Middle Tennessee State because that's exactly what that game was. Yeah, and I think it's important for, speaking of Emory and speaking of Morrow saying he was our backup for this game, I think it's important to understand, too, that remember, these players have uh, the ability to play in four games and still retain their red shirt. Mm-hmm. So they're going to do that strategically, right? So now you've got, if you have to play backups, there's ability for each one of them to get into four if necessary, and they still have their red shirt available to them. So 
that's you know that's kind of what you're gonna do is is Emery going to be the backup next week at AM if potentially uh you know Tyler goes down or they're winning whatever the situation is it's probably Jakari right so I mean you have to just kind of look at that and strategically you have to it's it's everything changes everything's different now so you have to be strategic with that stuff um and look Emery look good we we all know we all know Emery is the real deal I mean you saw his you saw his arm angle when he ripped that one for 15 or whatever so good right so off play he was he was at I don't know, 60 degree. Like it was so nice. Um, and that's what that's what he can give you. He's so calm out there, too. I like dude, I mean, everyone's legit. Love him. But hey, listen, I I would uh, I would slightly disagree with all that. I mean, I just think that him making that move, he can say what he wants about picking and choosing this and that, whatever. I understand Jakari brings packages with running, and that we might see that. That's fine. But let's just be honest here, man. This is the quarterback position. And if you're going to sit out him and you're going to let the true freshman get him run, and then that's going to be the way it's going to go except for four possible games, then Emery's the backup. He's the heir apparent. He's the better quarterback. He throws the ball better. I mean, so if Jakari can get it going on, fine this year. But I'm just saying, I thought that spoke volumes. And I would not be surprised if I saw the portal open up and he someone jumps into it come the end of the year. Um, because I just think that was the writing on the wall. With all due respect, we, we just haven't seen it from him to this point. We've seen multiple scrimmages. Just haven't seen it. And Emery got the nod. And he but looked what, good. But the part. Yeah, of course he looks good. We know he looks good. But exactly. why, would That's you, the whole thing. why would you burn a game for Jakari if you don't have to? But I'm just saying the fact, though, that you're not confident enough to be able to have Jakari be the backup for all season, right? Because he's good enough to go in there when you need him to. You got to pick and choose. But you're throwing the true freshman out there in the first game, and he's looking like he's good enough to be out there every single game and be active. I just don't – like, for me, mentally, the coaches are like, yeah, this is the better quarterback. That's, that, that's what that's what, I, that's what he's screaming to me. Maybe that changes over the course of the season with practice, this and that. You know, putting in tape work for Jakari. I don't know, but I'm just saying right now it looks to me like we had the heir apparent, and it's not going to be Jakari. Mm, uh, yeah, I'm totally opposite of that. Okay, I totally right. think it's strategic. So, so good. I get to, I get the deliver right here. Uh, I'm actually going to take more of the toast side here because I I understand. Listen, Jakari being second year here, he should be the number two. The fact that you had the true freshman come in first speaks volumes. Now, to me, Mario said what he said, and I could agree with it in principle, but it screams more politics than practical. The politics of it is, oh, yeah, Emery's the starter of this game. It could change. But the fact that Emery is the starter at all speaks the bigger volumes to me. Yes, I think Jakari has a different skill set. We've said it. Jakari needs to get in, especially what he's able to do with his, with his feet. But the fact that a true freshman could come in there and get the first burn, no matter what, I, I'm Jakari. Coach Chris Ball comes and talks to me. He says, well, yeah, I'm, I'm tuning him out. I don't, I don't believe him. I should have been the first in. That's how that works as a competitor, and I don't believe him. And there was a reason for it, and Emery proved it. He was three for three on his passes. It, it, the biggest consensus you hear about Emery, nothing's too big for the kid. He's already a big kid. He's a big specimen in himself. He, he's another fino. Mario Crispo has done a really good job identifying these finos. Freshman in name only. Ruben Bain, freshman in name only. That kid does not look like a freshman. Emery does not necessarily look like a freshman. He doesn't act like a freshman, right? Fletcher, the consummate fino. There's finos all over the place. The fact that he was able to jump it, because we said, Jakari just needs to be close in accuracy. And if he's not close, you know who the number two is going to be. It doesn't prove well. I still think... Jakari's going to get some burn, but at this point, the first guy on, I'm going to say Emery's your number two to prove it otherwise. That's just me. That's just me. All yeah, right. It's, it's all strategic. I, I will also say this, and, and um, uh, to Leonard Taylor, bro, you're going to get held all season long. <laughs> Uh, mm. It's just going to happen. You're 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 a stud. You're you're going to go to the league. You're going to get held all season long. On third down, you can't be chirping at the refs and then get a, a, a flag called and they get a first down. Like You, you have to... You, you got I, it's got to be frustrating as hell knowing you're held on every play but you can't go chirping so you get a personal foul for just talking to the ref on when you shut them down on third down and they get a first down down on like their four yard line like that was you know a learning moment but it's can't gonna have you it. all season long bro you can't you can't do it i know it's gonna be frustrating but it's because you're a monster <laughs> take it as a compliment i he i i was looking to see if the ash chewing was gonna happen mm -hmm. and occur 
and I'm sure they're not happy about it, but it was, I did sense a little bit of the Jimmy Johnson rules because now they didn't get on him that bad. Well, and the, and the thing is, the, the play before that, the, the announcers even said, well, yeah, well, my boy had about three holds on that play. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, so, yes, they were getting held. Listen, you were overpowering them. It was the second half. Those guys were beat down. Like, yeah, Leonard Taylor coming at you. I'm going to hold him, too. But Leonard just has to be like, all right, whatever. Just can't complain. You can't get nailed for a 15-yarder there. I'm telling you right now, it, it, if you got – a culmination and added all the holding calls that the ACC and various refs miss over the years, the time equivalency is going to be greater than like the Godfather trilogy. Like you would, it, it would eclipse the Godfather trilogy by tenfold. That's how many holds go against the University of Miami seemingly every single game. And they send it to the ACC offense office and they just don't call it. You just got to get used to it. All right. Segue. I'm, I'm, pretty much i have no idea what else to say but some of the the fan experience i just wanted to talk about in the fourth quarter toast i know you didn't have the opportunity to go last night but in the fourth quarter and on i thought it was a a glitch i thought you know because lightning in the area the whole thing went dark right they cut the lights off immediately all of the miami fans put on their 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 phones right the lights on their phones so it began it was like a u2 concert Taylor Swift concert and they start playing zombie nation and they're like let's turn it up let's turn this into a club because you know you do the fours up still players please can I talk to you real quick put one of your fours down it's not eight quarters it's just four put your four put four fourth quarter not eight guys look like a bunch (laughs) of dummies when you throw up two four it's the fourth quarter not the eighth quarter it's the fourth well the fourth quarter is about to start that's always a tradition for the universe of Miami but to the Miami people listening Keep that new tradition because that was cool. That was badass. That can be a new thing, especially for night games like Miami Knights. All right, in the fourth quarter, they drop the lights. You put it's not going to work at the 330 game against Texas A&M. I get you. That was super cool. Even even Mario made a mention in the presser after the game locker room report. He's like, dude, we were super juiced, bro. He's such a 1990s wrestler, bro. (laughs) <laughs> it was it was it's it was, Ray it was Mysterio awesome, Jr. Yeah. and Mario Three Stario Jr. That's his that's his wrestling name. <laughs> Mario Three Stario. Come on, brother. We were juiced. It was uh it was really cool. Yeah. I mean it, it went was... dark and then everyone was like, Oh, what was that? You know, and they stand up and everybody's walking to look out at the field. Um, and it was great. And then they put the lights on, right? Like the like the singular LED around circles, and everybody puts their phones up with the camera lights, and it was it was pretty dope i hadn't seen that and and uh it was a cool it was a cool spectacle for sure they need to keep doing it it was it was yeah it was fun it, it could be especially a night when they do that it i'm not going to say it rivals enter sandman but like it at least enters the room and says hey you know how's if it, it going, were guys? if it were a night game that was a big game oh, and they be- did that that place would come down dude i mean it would be it almost intense. came down it almost came down they announced the 75 percent capacity. There were about forty nine thousand. Is what they announced. <laughs> Full. They announced forty nine thousand twenty four. Yeah, not so much. So, they had, they had TV it was. It was a good. That panned the crowd. And that's not so much. No, no, I understand. <laughs> I understand that because tickets sold and people sh- yeah. uh, showing Listen, bro, things. We we knew that you were five and seven last year. This is an event town. This fan base, I think, has been pretty obvious over the last number of months that we've majority of us have moved into show me first mode you know what i'm saying and i and here's the good thing i think last yesterday was a step in that direction you showed us something you showed us what we were expecting to see can can i interject something we have known for years decades 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 that the university of miami a small commuter school in the heart of coral gables they don't have room uh Raddy talked about it, our athletic director. Yeah, there's that's a bridge that's too far. We're never going to be able to have an on-campus stadium. We just don't have the room. We're landlocked. We have understood that we have basically worn a suit probably two times too big for our body. If we assumed, if we assumed that the University of Miami Hurricanes perfect stadium would probably be about 40,000 people, 40 to 45, and then you could add whatever you want in suite level seats, right? Can we assume then that would be a small Miami sellout, like a true Miami hurricane sellout? Like we get faulted for being in a stadium too big. 
if we had Baylor Stadium, that's what I'm going to do. Whatever Baylor's max capacity in that stadium should be our stadium size. I've said that for years. If we get to that number, yeah, we had a sellout. Don't laugh yourself, rest of the country. Who gets a sh- Like, you don't understand. You're always posting pictures, major public. Oh, it's 10 minutes. But first of all, you dicks. There was a lightning storm. They told us to stay in the concourses, assholes. And you're trying to try to tell us, oh, this is what it looks like 10 minutes before the game. 10 minutes before 7 o'clock, we were told that we're con- like the game's getting pushed back to 730. Stay out so you don't get struck by lightning. We're in like a lightning capital of the world. But I'm just telling you, in in it was a it was a, a Baylor Stadium equivalent sellout for the University of Miami Hurricanes. We just play in a stadium way too big. We always have, we always will. But it'll fill up if you're playing well. Yeah, because then that's the bigger event, right? Well, right. those oh. are the people. Those are the people that they just want to come to the event. It's a but hard that's rock Miami, sellout. bro. That's, that's Miami. what I'm saying. That's what we're saying, and <laughs> yeah. that's how it works. So if you get the 40 to 45 every week of the that's fans. That's a Baylor who sellout. Are, mm-hmm. Right. Who are the fans who go to yes. watch Kane's football because of the small commuter private school, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. And the fans are coming from Palm Beach County and Stewart and all that stuff down to, you know, the, the upper keys. And you get that whatever. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you play Notre Dame, right? Hard and then you sellout. have And then you have the, the, the hard rock sellout, which is all the extra people who don't know shit about football but they want to go to a great event because their friends are going to the great event well then that's when you get the stadium capacity sellout it's two entirely different things thank you there's a so, it's a hard rock sellout and we, and we got to stop totally trying different. to it's we totally can't live different. up to that expectation we'll just never get there those are the people we, who go and they, sell out hard rock they, they go and they buy canes gear on the way to that game because they don't have <laughs> any they're just you know what i mean it's not yeah. it's not they're not fans brett loves those people Loves them. He loves those people. We, yeah, and we've sent them our his way for years. <laughs> yes, he keeps expanding his shop because so it of is those two people. very different things. But the, you know, everyone will continue to say what it is. But that's the truth. Rose, hundred percent right. That's the reality of it. All right. So let me ask you this: We see the first game uh, a couple uh, episodes ago. We did our season when we did our season projections. Mm-hmm. How did the? So I went nine and three. Scoop went eight and four. Row went seven and five with a ninety percent chance of doing better than that. Yeah, yeah but smart. seeing that first like game against Miami of Ohio, mm-hmm. how does that make you feel about your prediction? Uh, for ninety-two percent better than seven and five. Ninety-two <laughs> percent. <laughs> oh, I took Let's go. <laughs> my my DMs were cooking. <laughs> my DMs were cooking over that uh prediction. <laughs> Listen, I'm feeling good about nine and three right now with the way that uh this offensive line looked. And uh, I'm feel yeah, I'm listen, I'm feeling is optimistic. I got no no shade going into AM. Like I'm feeling just as confident, if not more, that we're going to pick up a dub next week and we're going five and up. We're starting five and zero. Oh. Okay, I had us five and zero oh as well. I'm I'm yeah. fine with the eight and four, and it goes back to um, this is what we expected to see last year. You expected to see that hard nose battle in the trenches, dominate the transfers, wear them down, be able to run the ball for two fifty. Your defense shuts down an inferior opponent, um, and you win thirty eight to three. That's a, Man, we've said it for two decades. That's what the fuck you're supposed to do to these teams, right? Not have to show anything, just dominate them for 60 minutes and and move on to the next. Um, does it change my predictions? No, I still say eight and four. Um, but I need, as Rose says, I need four games. I need to be able to see, okay, next week is a different opponent, right? Now you've got SEC. You've got talent that you're going to be playing. you got to deal with the... the um the the scooter crasher in uh uh what's his name tomorrow you know, over, Bobby Petrino Bobby Petrino oh. over there coming in and calling plays um so it's a little bit it's a different AM than you saw last year um I think defensively we'll be in a better spot to be honest with you uh without that running back what was his name the guy in the Dolphins oh yeah 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 right yeah. without that yeah. dude um so you're gonna see more net look next week is a <laughs> how stupid this is next week is a must win yes right so as as dumb as that may sound next week offensively you need to be able to show me that you're capable of of beating a team like that 
by being maybe a bit more creative in the passing game? Are we going to see more than 50%, 15% of the install? Um, are you going to be able to run the ball for 150 next week? Don't call 250. Are you going to be able to run the ball for 150 against AM and m and be able to get the ball downfield with Tyler and the receivers? So there's no holding back on the playbook ne- next week. That's what, you know, last, last year, oh, God, he's holding back. Guys, he's holding back. He's keeping. No, 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 no. That was all you fucking had. He had his first. He had a hundred percent of his install game one. That was it. So, what are we going to see? So, I can't tell you if I'm better than eight and four, and I can't give you. I'll, I'll say it's fifty fifty that we're better than eight and four. How's that? <laughs> you guys love this, huh? You, you love yeah, it's fifty fifty. <laughs> you know what? It's possible. It's possible, but I need him to see more offense. All right. Uh, great time great time great game uh we saw we hung out with uh with fanboy last night a little bit saw that danny was there yeah danny was there danny came and and hung out in the uh, in the box with us for a while um and uh dude such a such a great dude met some of his friends oh stella stella's barking good morning mama just got home from yoga all right. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was great to hang with Danny. Um, he's going to be on the show with us here soon. He's like, yeah, I got to come back on the show. So uh, we'll get him back on and certainly talk some. He is, man, he's such a huge Canes fan. He's got something very cool coming up, too. I'm not saying anything. But very, okay. very, very cool. Okay. So it'll be fun for everybody. He can go to a and, whole bunch of Canes games while this strike is going on. He's got nothing else to do. All right. <laughs> You'll be there for a and I know that. Good, good. All right. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a great time. Great time, although they ran out of Cuban sandwiches before the game even started. What? Yeah, the, yeah, the Cuban sandwich, uh, you not kiosk, but the the place mm-hmm. in the in the thing that sells the Cuban sandwiches, uh huh, ran out of Cuban sandwiches. Jesus, right? You can't do that at Hard Rock Stadium. Thank God like, you didn't have going, sixty thousand for a Miami well. game. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? All right. The game hadn't even started yet. I'm trying to get three Cuban sandwiches. No, we're <laughs> we're out. No more Cuban sandwiches. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I so, will uh, I will be at next week's game, A and M, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I saw enough to uh, say, all right, I'll go back out there. My uh, my MTSU scars have gone away now after watching yesterday. Uh, I've moved on. So yeah, man, I will tell you this: Miami it. of Ohio was much better than Middle Tennessee State. I would like to think so. Yeah. So it was. I mean, it was really nice. It was really nice. If if you can go five and zero and start the season five and zero. Fucking let's go. You, you, the bow is then on what I said it could be on last year. Just chalk it up to hiring the worst offensive coordinator in Miami history. Put it all on him. I'm, I'm dead serious. <laughs> How's Maryland doing? Yeah, I don't play today. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We will Everybody see. Right, because listen, Texas A&M is the same opponent early in the season. You turn around and beat them, and you look more off offensively efficient. Remember, we didn't score a touchdown against like Texas A&M. It was it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Like we just, but we dominated the game statistically, and we st- lost. Statistically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. you know how how are we going to find ways to lose? Yep. Yeah, we found that was it. The, the, was the it. statistical probability of losing that game was 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 astronomical. Oh, all right, so, hey, listen, now you've got me thinking. Who's Maryland playing today? Good news, mm-hmm. good news. All three of us uh, are one and zero in the picks. We all picked Miami. Miami covered easily. So there you go. Uh, full slate of games today, everybody. Um, it's almost ten o'clock. So we're gonna wrap this the up because we want this to drop. It was the under. It was the under. under. Came through. It, it was under. under. Came through. Yep. <laughs> Vegas knows, man. Vegas knows. Uh, so we want to get this thing dropped before uh, the games kick off. So you have a time to listen to it. So we're gonna wrap it up now. Yes. Um, we will see you guys next week for the preview of a and m until then, go Canes. Maryland plays Towson. There's a dub. How do you think that's gonna go? How many points? How many points does Gaddis put up against Towson? Thirty. Any chance Old Dominion beats Vatech again? <laughs> it's well, Vatech fun, sucks, do. don't they? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Hello. Let's go. Bang. Let's Bang. go. Let's go. Bang. 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 Thank you.